didn't share that, but as I listened and continue to listen, the first speaker is Chuck Swindoll. Uh, I bet by Carly, just I, I know his voice. And uh, if I'm right on that, then uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. And then uh, Jesus said, uh, my sheep hear my voice and they listen to me. May we have the same spirit, not with the preacher, but with, with our shepherd, uh, Jesus. We know his voice too, right? We hear it. Um, the, the sermon is a tricky one today. Uh, I want to do a little bit of background and, and then some practical teaching with it. So, uh, so God's word is God's word. A little bit of background to this. In chapter 13, Jesus continuing his journey to Jerusalem, but some Pharisees come and they, they you gotta get out of here, get out of here. Herod's going to kill you. And um, the, the commentators, I, I, it's been a while since I looked at that, so I looked at my notes, and last night I went over it again. The commentators, without exception, say they didn't know if the Pharisees were up to a trick or if they were legit. You know, either they're protecting Jesus uh, or they want to get rid of him. And, and uh, that's the tricky one. The, 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 the evidence on the one side is there is no evidence that Herod was plotting to kill Jesus. He had done that to John, so there was some evidence. But there is no record in the Gospels that Herod was after Jesus at this time. So that's on the one hand. Uh, there were some Pharisees that believed, though. That's on the other side. And so maybe, that you know, they, they had their thoughts. So we don't know. Um, and and I'm, come, I'm going to come back to that. Sometimes in life, we don't know, you know. And, and uh, so Jesus picks up on their, their, uh, their nudging him. And he talks about Herod. And it's, it's interesting how he refers to Herod. He call that fox. And, and uh, so that, that's, the foxes are smart, but uh, it's kind of a left-handed compliment, right? They're crafty, yeah, kind of like the devil. Uh, tell that fox. So I'm not going to continue. He's not going to change me. I'm going to continue my ministry today and tomorrow and the next day. And, and so that's what Jesus said. So, so in, in our lives, uh, also, we, we are citizens of our country. But uh, again, in the scriptures, it says we must obey rather than men. We must obey God. So if it comes to push to shove, we listen to God. We don't listen to our country. And, and we have to pay the consequences for that if it comes to that. But that's what Jesus is saying. Tell Herod, uh, you're not going to change me. You're not going to push me out. You know, I'm going to continue uh, my purpose. And then the last part, uh, before we get to the sermon part, is Jesus talks about Jerusalem, his journey to Jerusalem. And, and uh, as Fred read that, there's, you know, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you, you, you stone the prophets. It, it's, it's, it's your MO. You know, you do not listen to God, but your own traditions and your own stubbornness. And, uh, uh, for me, too, uh, how often I would have gathered you like a hen gathers her, her, chick, her chicks underneath her wings. And uh, it's interesting in the verse before the scripture that I really want to highlight today. It, it, it's interesting. Look at your house. It's left to you desolate. It's interesting in the story of the prodigal son. Uh, the father and the son are on different pages. The father says, this is your brother. And the older brother says, it's your son. To get the little, whatever that word is, the adjective, right? That sometimes it's different. Jesus uses the word, it's your house. How do you love that place? Didn't you know I would be in whose house? My father's, my father's house, mine. Now it's your house. God help us, different one. The, dear brothers and sisters, this is God's house. Perish the day if ever Jesus would come and say, it's your house. You take care of it. What, what, a, what a desolation, right? It is, this is always God's house. We share it with him when we come here. And so that's the, the background. And then Jesus kind of lays, lays it all in the line to the Pharisees, which kind of goes back to the very beginning. He puts it on, you know, I don't know whether you're saying get out of here or whatever. But I'll tell you this, you won't see me again until you say, Blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm going to put you to the test. And, and now I want to just that last verse in our lives. Sometimes we don't know. Is it God or is it the devil that's pushing me around? That's what that little clip was saying, right? Sometimes David lost the baby. It was, it was punishment. 
Okay, sometimes we lose a baby and it's part of God's deeper plan. Our health. Sometimes it's it's to get our attention. Sometimes it's it, it's in spite of of our sins. So we never know. And, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Is our faith sees us through those uncertainties. That's what the video clip was talking about. Life is filled with uncertainties. Lord, should I go there? Should I go there? Is the devil wanting me to go there? Are you wanting me to go there? Sometimes it's obvious, right? <laughs> Some sins are so obvious, but a lot of things are not. It's not so black and white. It's not so cut and dry. And, and so what Jesus is saying that I want to share with you today is if we confess, if you put your money where your mouth is, if you put your money where, you, where your faith is, you put your confession where your heart is, then it'll all come out. Because I tell you this, and we were just talking about that yesterday, is, is your, your heart and your voice are connected. You know, when you say to somebody that you don't love, I love you, it goes, I love, uh, I love you. Right? You can't do it. The little game with you today, Simon, ever since play that game, Simple Simon says, Touch your head, right? So Simon says, touch your head. And, and, and so th there it goes. You know, it, there's the connection. I have a little game, and, and boy, I'm totally deficient if you didn't know that. And so this one, it, it says, uh, touch the screen if it's, if it's the right, if it's the connect. And what is this for colors? So it's yellow, blue, red, black. Those are the four pretty simple colors, right? It's not mauve or magenta things like that. I should be able to do that. Only the trick is this, is that sometimes they'll say yellow and it's really blue. So do you believe your eyes when you see what, what, what you can say? There's a connection, right? And that's what we're talking about today, is sometimes in life, the, it, it, it's a dissonance and you, you're not sure. And, and so that's where the, the confession comes in. And let me walk you through that, then, okay? And just in some simple little things, and I prayed as I was working on this that I wouldn't sound silly or whatever. So these are some practical things to share with you. And you see if they fit in your own life. Okay, they're, they're that simple. Uh, in saying things or keeping them in your heart, confessing it out loud, or it's nobody else's business other than God. Uh, in prayer, sometimes we pray out loud together. Sometimes we pray silent. Which one is better? Well, they're both. They're both, right? Let me share with you some reasons for, for both. But when you say out loud, here I've learned again from, from the times I've been with the Lord, you know, in my goals, is, is it's good for you to pray out loud sometimes, even your prayers of, of, of supplication for yourself. God, I'd like a million dollars. You say it. Did I say that? But my goodness, it, that's so self-centered. You know, so you hear when, 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 when you're speaking. Do, do you know in the Middle Ages, people would not read silently. They'd read out loud. It would take a lot longer, but you'd remember a lot. It's a funny thing. I, I just share that with you, okay? So that's one of the reasons why you say things out loud, is you hear yourself. I can't believe you said that. Yeah, I know that. But I told you that. Can't talk too much to yourself, right? Or, you know, but it's that type of a process. And so when you pray, there, there's sometimes where you pray out loud and then you listen. There are times when you need to be silent, or right? it's good to be silent when you're at warfare. God is omniscient, the devil's not. So he reads, God knows. So when you're going through a time of testing really hard, keep it private, keep it. Keep it between you and God. That sometimes the rest of us don't need to know. We shouldn't know. Not that we couldn't help you, but it's not our business. It's your business with God. And I don't know how else to say that. Other than there are times where, where we help each other, but there are times where you're in it yourself. I can't die for you. That's private between you and God. And so there are times in our lives that are very personal, and, and, and there's where you're silent. And, and, but you're talking to God, and you know if you reach your mind. The devil will not. 
He, 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 he reads your face. He reads everything else, I think. But only God knows your very thoughts. And so that's it. So going back to the first one where I share with you in our prayer, there are times to say it. So there are times we need to confess. It's not good enough for a couple to love each other. They see it. I mean, when you walk in the room, I smile. And I'm so happy to see you. You know when somebody loves you as a friend too. But it's good to say that. To confess it. So others know it too. That you're my blessing. Confession is important. It's important. I would say that, that you know, the, if, if you didn't have... I'm, I'm a little bit here, but I'm not going to say it anyway. I'm not going to say if you don't have a marriage license, then Adam and Eve, I don't know that they had a marriage license, right? Yet they loved each other. So there could be on that. You apply six saying too, that don't hold me that, that here be my last word. My last word is that vows are important. They're important. That they, they, they solidify. It's not just between the two of you. It's a community that, that is blessed by the two. Others are blessed by your love for each other. So confession is important in marriage. Others see that, and, and, and it's your kids see that, and so on. And, and we see it in our relationship to God. Transitioning to the spiritual part. The prophets, they, they confessed, they wrote down what they, they saw and, and, and what they wrote about, what God was teaching them. And their visions were actually seeing things. Jeremiah had visions, uh, the, 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 the fog, right? They did other things too. And, and so in our relationship to God, when we confess and we believe in him, we see things that other people don't. If you're a person of faith, this time in the world's history, you see the persecution of Christians. I'm not talking about Russia. I'm talking about here. If you're a Christian, you see it. <laughs> you know, we were just talking. You know, that the, they're they're making fun now. The journalists are finding aware. You know that that there's not freedom of the press in Russia. Oh, so we have it here. Uh, you're with me. You know what I'm saying. And so we see things. If you don't have faith. You say, you know, those Christians, they're a bunch of bigots and they deserve everything that they get and more. How can you say that? Opposite ends. Are we living in two different worlds? You bet. The world of faith and the world of unfaith. Romans says it so well in another way. It says, all things work together for good to them that love God. Love God. Right? And so if that's a verse that, that you keep before you, you're going through a hard time and you don't understand it, but you confess, God, I know that you're behind this, or you'll turn it into a good. And I don't care how many days or months it takes, I will see it. I will see it. Because I know that you love me, and I love you, and you'll take care of it. And so all these things we see because of our faith, and our faith needs to be confessed. We, we do that in the creed, you know, different things. But, but it's, it's a part of us. So there's a connect. Not only up here, but down here. Sorry, Mike. And, and, and when we do that, then the Lord is able to, to lead us through those hard times. So that it doesn't matter anymore. You know, any things that are important. Lord, boy, I pray that the Cubs are going to win the World Series this next year. Well, if they don't, the world won't end. It might, but it won't end. So either way, you win. If it goes this that's what the video clip was saying. If it goes this way, you're blessed. If it goes the other way, you see a reason. God works that way. That's your faith. People who don't have that don't see that. I don't know how, how long I've shared with you, but at the end, the, it's, in my personal life, I remember when B and I were first married, I was watching the news. It was in the Twin Cities area, Minnesota. 
and one of the reporters. And I understand this a little bit from our son Jordan, uh, being a journalist himself. And I, so I, I am aware that they are human beings. Before I thought they were just like robots. You know, they went out. Oh, these are the facts, and, and so they just do that, and that's what it is. No, they they put themselves into it too. They're writing and, and their other things. And I remember the reporter. Now it makes sense from our own Jordan. But I still remember what that reporter said. He was at a fire. He was a devastating fire that killed a whole family, mother, father, three children, all gone, just like that. And he was at the scene. I remember his words. It affected him. He commented, if you have faith and such a thing happens, you don't need to say anything. If you don't have faith and such a thing happens, there is nothing you can't say. And that sum it up. Man, I'll never forget that. And dear ones, I want you to have the same thing. There are times in life where I wish you or someone could tell me what's going on. Get out of here. They're going to kill you. You can't say that anymore. Is that, is that God? Is that the Holy Spirit directing you? Is that the devil? I don't know. Ever been there? I, I sure have. I think you have too. Well, we trust. That's where our faith comes in, right? Lord, I give this to you. And now I know you'll take care of it. So when we speak, we speak in that time. Then when the time is fulfilled, we look back. And we're silent. Because you'll see. God was in it after all. He directed every step of the way. Been proud of this, but uh, what's coming to my mind right now is just that picture. We, we have it in our home. The beach. Where they're walking. How come in my hard time, Lord, there's only one set of footprints? The only answer. Okay, now I'll end there. You remember that. The next time you feel alone. And so, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.